See, this is what happens. I, I have to sit here for two minutes. Hey, everyone. <clears throat> this is something I don't get to do very often, but I just bought this computer yesterday for $450, I think, or $500 or something. I don't know how much it was. <clears throat> there was a number, and it was less than $600, um, but I bought it for a customer. So this thing is brand new, out of the box, and I'm gonna find out what it is for you real fast. It's a, it's a Hewlett Packard something or another. Um, this is an HP15-EF0023DX. So. Brand new out of the box, never been used. I have charged it, but otherwise I have not done anything of value with it. Let's uh, let's take it apart, because I like taking things apart. Make sure the table's free of dust and debris, because there was a computer here that was covered in dust. All right, I think I've taken these apart before, but I've not taken apart on video, so let's get right to it. These things, I actually recognize this, these things have screws all over the place, underneath here. So we're going to have to take these bump strips on the bottom, rubber feet strip things have to come off. And oh, this one's ooh, especially tight. So. Notice there are screws all the way across, so we have to take the strip off. Now, you might be wondering, why am I taking a computer apart that has a solid-state drive and tons of RAM already? Well, I want to show you, if you're interested in upgrading, what you need to do and what you can upgrade. So let's start taking screws out. See these black ones? I don't know why they're black, but they're black. And they're over here on the corners for some strange reason or another. Uh, that one didn't come out, did it? Come on, don't be picky. <sighs> really? Really? You're gonna get stuck. Maybe my screwdriver's not magnetic enough. Alright, well, that was annoying. Let's see what happens. If you uh, scrape a hard drive magnet against a screwdriver to magnetize it, Eventually, it will become demagnetized. So, I hope you can see everything nicely. Um, I'm still kind of trying to refine this video setup, but for now, this has been working pretty well for the past couple of videos I've recorded of me taking things apart. So, I'm, I'm just gonna keep doing it. Now, the reason I wanted to take this apart, even though it's brand new, is that it's brand new, and people will buy these and want to upgrade them. So, I'm gonna put my fingernails here along the back, and... Uh, yeah, can't pry it up. Okay, so what do we have to do instead to get this open? Open the computer. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, yeah. Ryzen 5, baby. So we actually need to get this seam here open, and uh, if you have plastic pry tools, this is a good spot to be using them, but I have a metal one, so I'm just going to use my metal pry tool, and... You need to get this top plate out. And be gentle. But get those clips free, baby. Once you get enough of them free, it'll just sort of separate by itself. So the reason I'm taking this apart, even though it's a, a brand new computer, is that we're going to potentially upgrade things in these computers, especially since um, this was recently on sale in some places. Um, for pretty good prices. It normally retails for 600 plus. So, a Ryzen 5 with, what, 12 gigs of RAM and uh, PCI Express 256 gigabyte solid state drive. I mean, it kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? It's, it's a pretty sweet little computer. It's um, not perfect. The wireless AC is one by one. Um, so 433 megabits maximum speed, and I'm betting that's wireless, uh, that's only on the 2.4 gigahertz band, because AC seems to add its speed on the uh, 5 gigahertz band. So yeah, um, now because this is new, I don't want to do too much prying, 
Um, I want it to stay pretty for the person who is giving me a large amount of money to, you know, get it ready for them. But, let's uh, get inside here and figure out what's going on. So this one is particularly difficult to pry open. Um, I've had several of these HPs that would just pop, like, easily pop right open. This one is being pretty angry. Um, it does not want to pop open like previous models. Um, there is clearly something that is holding it here very tightly. So, I don't know. I don't know how hard it's going to be, but... We've got to get this to pop up here. But there's got to be a clip somewhere there holding it down. Yeah, this is kind of exploratory because it's a new computer. Um, it's not even... Ah! Hey, guess what? Hey, guess what? Look, I don't know why you're still watching this video because I'm clearly very stupid. But I uh, got all the ones under the bump strips and got so excited that I missed these two. So maybe you just turn the video off now and don't listen to me. <laughs> Oh, how much you want to bet that it just goes crack and everything opens right up? Because now, the vast majority of these clips have already been popped. The screws aren't in it. Idiot, take out all the screws. So that's number one. Number one piece of advice for anyone who wants to take apart their computer. Don't forget to take out all the screws. All right, so yeah, it's flopping, but it doesn't want to open. So what do we do? We'll look inside, there's nothing really holding it. I bet you if I put my hand in here and push up on the inside of the middle here, just just give it a give it a little push, you know, that uh, it'll fix that. The focus actually looks a little wacky. That's better, okay. Yeah, push it in the middle and the back clips will let go. So you don't have to do any more prying. All right, all right. Beautiful computer. So, I'm looking at it this way, but you're gonna look at it this way. What do we have in here? Let's look it over. Let's get some zoom action so I can show it to you a little better. Come on, focus, baby, focus. All right. So, this computer came with uh, a tiny, tiny board, haha. <laughs> Um, what does this say? This is 8 gigs. So, this computer has one 8 gig and one 4 gig. That's how they made 12. Here's your 1x1 one one Wi-Fi card. There is not a second antenna in the case. So, if you upgrade this wireless card, there is no other antenna in the case to attach to it. So, um... You'll either have to hack an antenna in, which I do not intend to show anyone how to do. It's not fun. Um, or you'll just have to... I don't know, when Wireless AX comes out on actual hardware that you can buy that isn't some expensive router, um, you know, maybe you could get one of those. But for now, um, you're stuck with the one by one wireless and you can't upgrade to 2x2 or any of that. So, that is unfortunate. So, wireless upgrade not happening. Um, RAM probably can go up to 32, because it's DDR4, I think. Maybe 64. I haven't looked it up. Computer comes with a solid state. 256 gigabyte PCI Express. Now, the slot is apparently keyed here. Um, I don't know what keying that is off the top of my head. But, um, I don't know if this slot supports SATA or not. Um, but why would you buy a SATA SSD to put in here? I can only think that you would want to, like, move a SATA SSD into this from an old computer. And that's the only reason I can think of why you would ever do that. Now, this is interesting. Um, this is very interesting. There's a slot here where it appears that you can install a hard drive. There, There is actually a location here for a hard drive, but I don't see any of the equipment to do a hard drive installation. So there's a connector that's unused and there's another one that's missing. I'm gonna look, but I don't, hmm. 
I don't know. I don't know if this is... I don't know if this is SATA or not. Um, sometimes there are connectors that go unused. Um, there may be other models of this with hard drives. I have... Um, I, I don't remember, but I, I may have seen another one of these with a hard drive. I also just noticed the anchors. There are anchor holes here that have no brass anchors. There's a metal screw thing here. This really looks like you may be able to add a hard drive if you got the cable, which you could probably get on eBay. So, anyway. Um... If this is an unused, but still integrated for some reason, SATA port, you have the option of, if you can find the cable uh, and possibly the caddy, putting a SATA hard drive in this case, in addition to the PCI Express one. Um, you can upgrade the RAM. The processor, I can basically guarantee you, is soldered directly to the board. There's no room in here for a socket anyway, I bet. Uh, and, oh, I can actually see it. And it, it's soldered directly to the board. No processor upgrade. Which is standard for most laptops now. So, there's your internals. Um, battery, obviously there's some very obvious screws around the battery. And it just slides directly into the slot. I bet that just pulls right out. Um, hinges here. It looks like the hinge goes under the wireless card, so to get this hinge out, if you needed to do a hinge mount repair, you'd need to take the wireless card out. One screw, oh god, so horrible. How, how could it ever be done by a normal human being? Um, this is actually really simple. Pretty much everything is on top of this board once you pry the base of the computer off. So, um, upgrades would be extremely easy, and that's the end of that. So, that's your HP 15-EF, whatever the number was. Um, brand new laptop, getting it open, looking at the innards, talking about upgrades. Um, I'm squeezing like this to get these clips to engage on the sides. So that... When they get it back, it doesn't crunch quite so much. Now, the back isn't snapping, so you have to make sure that you snap the back as well. Yeah, something like that. Make sure you get that back snapped together, and I got some, some gross humanity on the LCD, so let's buff that back out so no one has to deal with it. Oh, and I see the touch matrix on the LCD, too. That's pretty cool. All right. So everything's back in its place. And, uh, well, I mean, you know the rest. Installation is the reverse of removal. I don't know why the screws are black over here. Actually, I'm looking. Um, these are M2.5. These are M2.5 screws. And all the other screws are M2 screws. So that's probably got a lot to do with it. So throw these black ones back in the back corners. They may have something to do with the hinge support. So definitely make sure you get them back where they belong. And all of these other screws look identical. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my magnetic screwdriver to vacuum them up. And uh, promptly, promptly drop one. I just just drop the stupid thing right and uh, put it back together so it, it's probably a pretty cool computer I can't wait to turn it on and play with it um, I so want to put handbrake on here and test it out just to see how long it takes to encode a clip um, I, I would be very interested in running some tests to see how it performs relative to my older but still good computers I have an i7 6700HQ and a um, AMD FX9590 um, which doubles as a space heater for the whole house that's kind of a bad joke but well I had to get a giant water cooling system for it when I built it because I got the biggest air cooler imaginable because I figured I might be able to avoid water cooling but nope had to buy a hundred dollar water cooler to go in there then I had to buy a new case to fit the water cooler so that became a uh, money pit real fast 
Getting these bumpers back in is really annoying. I, I don't like it. Um, this whole design suffers from some annoying things here. But at least once you get these strips out, it, it's relatively easy to figure out. Don't get off track with them. They'll, uh, they're not very nice. Now, when you get near the end, when you get to where you have to put the strip in here, it's probably going to be better. Um, get it near the end, but then don't push it down so that the end um, falls in. Get the end in first and then kind of push the rest of the strip and smooth it out because the problem is that these strips kind of get stretched when you pull them and sometimes they don't quite go back in straight um, that front one's worse than the back one because the back one is much thicker rubber so you know good luck with the back one getting it to not go in right by accident um, you can get it to not go in right on purpose but why would you do that that's just silly okay so you know, I think, now that I've done that, I think I actually might like to uh, make this into a more comprehensive video where instead of just taking this computer and uh, looking inside of it, we actually take it for a little bit of a spin. Wow, this strip doesn't want to go back the correct way. That's mildly annoying. All right. So, come back. Um... Well, right now you're going to immediately see part two, but I will start recording again in just a minute. So let's talk about this HP in a little bit more detail. One of the big problems with it is that it comes with Windows 10 in S mode. And S probably stands for secure or something to that effect, but really it stands for another four-letter word that starts with S. Um, scum would be a family-friendly version, since this is supposedly a family-friendly video. So, mm, excuse me, the coffee is coming back. Um, what I'm going to have to do to this computer is erase everything on it and put normal Windows 10. You do have the option of going to the Microsoft Store, and I believe you have to sign into a Microsoft account to do this, but there's an app that will convert Windows 10 to normal mode. For those people who are not able to reinstall Windows 10 clean. However, if you can do a fresh installation of the latest edition of Windows 10, which you can get the you can make a bootable USB drive or DVD to do so, if you get the uh, Windows 10 media creation tool from Microsoft, I would highly recommend that you go do that and you put it in this computer, boot it up. Put a fresh Windows 10 on after after you copy the drivers off of the C drive because all the hardware in this is brand new. And you may have difficulty using some of your hardware. Um, I've not actually used the computer, so we're about to find out in real time just how much trouble it will be for someone who puts a fresh Windows 10. Now, I need to note that I don't use a standard Windows 10 installation disk anymore. I've already created system images and I use my own proprietary software I've written to install Windows 10 images that are pre-configured and then because it uses the digital licensing system Windows 10 introduced, they just go out to Microsoft and license themselves once they're on the internet. So, there's that. Um, it, it's a little unorthodox, but it's way faster. And I, I actually intend in this video to show you in real time <clears throat> the process that I use to install Windows 10 on computers. And I'm not going to edit it down, so skip ahead if you don't want to watch certain parts. But I just like to show you my workflow. Nobody works for me anymore. I do everything completely alone. So I don't really have anyone around that knows how to do this stuff anymore. I kind of can serve as documentation in case I do bring someone back on board. So let's get to this computer and make it not Windows 10 in suck mode. That's perfect. That's what I'm going to start calling it. All right, my friends. Here's problem zero. I call it problem zero because it can't be problem one because this is a bit of a prerequisite. So you'll notice right here, I have a flash drive installed. That flash drive is installed exclusively for the purposes 
of getting Windows, or rather, um, my service system to boot. But here, a common problem with many newer laptops, especially these thinner ones, is that they have no Ethernet. So this is a USB 3.0 to gigabit Ethernet adapter. I have two of these because they are super duper handy. Make sure that you plug it into one of those lovely delicious uh, Windows or uh, <laughs> keep saying Windows super speed outlets on the side of the computer. Outlets? Ports? What's wrong with me today, man? <sighs> Let's just get the job done, my friends. Power on. F10. Get into the setup. F10, 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 F10. Come on, F10. Let's do the F10. Yeah, nope, nope, nope. Don't exit. All right, F10. What do we got here? I always turn on virtualization technology for fun. Boot options. Secure boot. Disabled. Legacy support. Eh, I don't need legacy support, actually. I have a uh, USB flash drive plugged in. So, I'll just do that, and then I'll use F9 to get the boot menu. It's going to ask me for a secure boot code here, and then I'll F9 as fast as I can um, to prevent it from booting up. Don't boot up, don't boot up, don't boot up. Okay, change boot device, USB hard drive. Boot from my flash drive, boot TriTech service system. And it'll boot the TriTech service system from a flash drive and eight cores. Well, it could be threaded, whatever. Eight CPUs. I remember when that kind of stuff was just a myth. Eight CPUs. Huh. You are crazy thinking you will have the eight processors, sir. Okay. What do we have here? All right. Log in. Root, of course. Now. Let's check out the file system info. It detected the... Yeah, let's make sure. Can you read that on there? Pretty good. A little bit more brightness. Something like that. Okay. So it has a... Has an NVMe solid state drive, and I'm gonna mount the third partition, which is the biggest. And there's a folder called HP, um, which I'm gonna delete HP McAfee, uh, delete HP, what's bridge? Is that jump start bridge? I don't know, but I don't want it. Uh, support, not gonna use that. Um, HP bin. Mm, not gonna use that. HP, HP Q where? Yeah, definitely not installing half of that crap. Um, I don't know that I need any of this. However, I'm gonna stop messing with it. I'm gonna copy the HP folder to my server. So that I have the drivers for the computer lying around. And I'm gonna U mount the NVMe thing. I'm lazy, so I don't type the number. And actually mount that one more time. Just to confirm. TT Winver A. It is core. Oh, why is it home single language? Why is it home single language? Well, will a regular license work? I guess we'll find out, won't we? So, Core 1909. So that's what I need to drop. Image drop. And NVMe ON1. And we have Win10 UEFI 1909 Core is number 8. Core 64 full. Uh, full just means I've pre-installed a bunch of garbage software that no one cares about. So we'll go ahead and drop that and nuke their whole hard drive. Um... There we go. This is probably the longest part of getting uh, getting Windows 10 installed. Just waiting on it. Oh, look, a big ant. There's a big ant on my table. Not anymore, there's not. Boy, get off my table. 
Mm. Bugs. Ha. Huh. Almost became a literal bug in the computer. So I had some ants, right? And uh, I put out a dish of borax and sugar water. Now I don't have ants over there anymore, but it looks like I may have to... <sighs> I may have to resort to uh, this this homemade taro in a couple of other places. So. This, this, is, this is very boring, isn't it? Just waiting on this thing to finish. It's absolutely yawn-worthy. Now that I'm looking at it, maybe you'd get a better view. If I did that, what do you think? Is that better? I think the window glares into it now. See, this is what happens. I, I have to sit here for two minutes. Two minutes of doing nothing of value, and, and I just ramble, because what are you going to do? This is, look, this is 15 seconds. It's like, I have ADHD, what am I supposed to do? I actually don't have ADHD, I think I have ADD, not ADHD. Yeah, the uh, I'm not as hyperactive as everyone else. I, I have the older form of it, you know, the, 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 the early millennial form, not the late millennial form. And the only drug that I get for it is caffeine, baby. So, new partitions coming up. Image drop successful, so let's check it out. Mount NVMe in zero, blah, 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 partition four this time. And I'm gonna copy that HP folder. Um, to NVMe, da, 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 so that the drivers will be there when I get back in. I'm gonna unmount everything and reboot. All right, and yank my flash drive so it doesn't try to boot from it, and Let's see if I have it. You know, it occurs to me, um, I've never really, I don't, I don't know what the single language thing is all about. You know, it's one of those details, like, it's weird, I don't know, but I don't recall ever caring about single language. I'd seen it mentioned as a, as an addition or whatever. Some sort of weird subversion of Windows. This doesn't have a Firefox icon, but check that out. Look at that. That nice dim screen. Isn't that something? Here, you need to be elevated, don't you? You do, you do. Go up, boy. Go up. There you go. That's probably as good as it's going to get. Let's just zoom out. Yeah. Let's zoom out. Alright. So, look at that. Nice dark screen. It's, it's really dark and hard to read. So, in, enjoy that. Um, this is the reason that I copy those drivers, because I can't see anything. And uh, it's because it needs the display adapter driver. And often, the display... Oh, really? You didn't ship one with it? You... You suck! Alright, come on, Windows 10. I really need this display adapter driver so that the brightness will come back up. I can't see, Captain. I can't see nothing. I need an Intel... No, it's AMD. Why would I need an Intel driver? Okay, so... Um, apparently that computer didn't come with the drivers nice and separate after all, for all the cool stuff that comes with it. So... What do I do? Um, let's go to AMD's website. Maybe there's an answer. Actually, let's see. Yeah, let, let's go to AMD and just get some generic stuff. Although, it's installing drivers for something. So, drivers and support. Alright, processors. Ryzen processors. Those are not really going to help. Uh, I guess not. I don't even know what a socket TR4 is. It's all these weird sockets, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I, I actually have no... I, I don't actually know which one of these I need to be picking. So I'm just gonna kind of... Yeah, um... Because I don't care. I don't care. As long as I get drivers that work, I really don't care. AMD chipset drivers, 50 megabytes. It's not that big. I'm just gonna save it. And then, let's go back and fish through the graphics. AMD second generation... Oh, that's Radeon. Like, I have no idea what kind of, uh... 
I have no idea what kind of Radeon chip this thing has underneath the hood. So, you know, you can just kind of, uh, whatever. What a shame. So, I bet you, if I lie to it and I tell it that I have like a Ryzen 5 2600, that it's probably going to work. Let's find out. Because Windows 10 won't pull us a driver. So I'm just going to grab a driver and see what happens. And the absolute worst case is it doesn't work. Alright, open it in folder. Open it in folder. Yeah. And AMD software. Where'd you go? 7-zip. Extract AMD software. See, now it's a full installation, so 7-zip's already available. Hey, wait a minute. It did pull a stinking driver after all. I hate you. So yeah, look at that. Windows 10 beat me to the punch. Apparently. Um, and the driver's from 8.16.2019. Let's see if this chipset software installs any newer stuff. Well, it's already installing all these blingy things. Yay. Oh, I could have done that. Jeez. Whatever. And there's this Ryzen Master. We'll have to do that, too. But, yeah. What fun, right? All right. So, that's the end of that. Now, obviously, the drivers have already been installed, so that, that saves me some trouble. But, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and install all that crap. I don't care. All right. So here's another thing I'm going to do. Um, I use a tool called Device Cleanup. Device Cleanup, after I drop one of these images, it has devices from the computer prior. This Uwe Sieber, dot D-E, Uwe Sieber, makes Device Cleanup. And I uh, have the 64-bit one here. I pick all the devices that are not plugged in and delete them. Right? It takes about a bajillion years for them to go away. And that uninstalls all the ghost devices for me. Then I have this batch file I wrote, delete unused driver packages. It goes into the information file folder and it removes every driver from the computer that is not currently in use. It's, it's actually an extremely simple file. It just changes directory and then uses a for command to run PNP util on every OEM information file. In doing so, it deletes all driver packages from the computer. I don't want to restart. All unused driver packages get deleted. And then, that's the end of that. Oh, come on, really? Uh, installing a redistributable... So, this computer clearly is quite fast. Um, I, I definitely wouldn't mind having one for myself, but unfortunately, A, the deal of the day is over, so if I went out and got it now, it would be much more expensive. And B, the other problem, is that I don't really have the money to spend on another computer that, uh, I don't need. So, I'm not gonna do that. Don't buy stuff you don't need. You know why rich people are rich? Rich people are rich because they're not spending their money. See, that's the thing. It's like, people are like, I would love it if I could be rich. But the problem is, to be rich, you have to do exactly the opposite of the reason you would love to be rich. Not spend it. Hmm. It's a hard pill to swallow, isn't it? Anyway. So, drivers are installed. I don't know where the Ryzen Master setup thing went. Now that I'm thinking about it, did it just... Did it not? What is going on here? Do I... Is it just mad at me? Did it smell that I tried to pull the wrong one? And it's just like, I'm not letting that guy run me. No. 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 Yeah, I don't know. It clearly isn't doing anything. So, yeah. Oh! There it is. I wonder if I agree to the terms and conditions. Oh, look, I have to scroll all the way through it. It doesn't mean that I'm reading it. Why do I have to agree to terms and conditions to install a damn driver to install a piece of software that the computer literally doesn't work without? Why do I have to agree to that? An even better question. It's like, why... You know, if you just set the computer up, you don't have to agree to that crap. I hate click wrap licenses. Alright. 
Let's restart it and see how fast it comes up now. So there you go, I set it up. Are you happy? Is that too bright? See, I can't even tell on the screen of this camera if it's too bright or not. But if it is, then so be it. Darken it just a bit. Probably a little better. Yeah. Oof, it is dark. I don't know why it's so dark. Brighten, jeez. There we go. You can angle on that. That's uh. That looks a little bit more true. Okay, look. Connect to the best of Windows by attaching a Microsoft account. No. Huh? Yeah, and I have to scan drive for errors, although it appears to have already done it. So, I don't know that I even needed to hit that button. But it's solid state, so it'll probably take all of, like, no time at all for it to finish. So, that's basically the end of that, isn't it? Now, here's, here's a matter of curiosity. I'm going to right-click and hit System here. We have a Ryzen 5 3500U. Oh, I didn't know they actually came out with the third gen Ryzen parts yet. So this, that, that's pretty interesting. Um, let's see, cpubenchmark.net. And let's see, yeah, I don't care. Let's see what the high-end chips, and it was a 3500U. And there it is, 7537. How does that go up against my 6700? HQ 6498 So my Intel from a couple years back is 6498 and This is 7537 so this computer is faster than that one Well, it's a ULV chip, but I wonder if handbrake if the intrinsics in in this third gen chip make a difference in fact, I'm actually kind of curious about that uh, What about my FX 95 does it even still in the category? So that's 6792. Yeah, so this computer's faster than my heat belching desktop, which is what I thought. And it cost 450, 500, somewhere in that range. I can't remember. Um, so there you go. Yeah, what I really want to get is one of these chips that's up here, but whatever. So, I mean, for a laptop, that means this Ryzen 5 is pretty darn powerful. Okay, um, I might run a handbrake test and see what happens. In an initial test of handbrake using the same preset and the same general category of driving footage, it's not one-to-one. -one. I'm not using the exact same piece of footage that's currently encoding in the other room. But using the same driving footage, uh, the same general kind of footage from the same camera, and the same preset, same version of handbrake. The average FPS is 7.9 right now. It says that the actual FPS is 4.6 right now, 5.4, 3.7. And the fans are running nonstop. So what I think is happening is that while it started off with um, an initial frame per second near 10, I think the chip gets warm. And it doesn't have as much thermal margin to work with. And now the FPS has gone down. So the Intel 6700 HQ, the i7, in the other room, is currently chewing away at this at an average frame rate of 8.4. Although it lingers a little bit lower. This one's frame rate is... Con the average just keeps going down. And um, that's not nearly as great as I thought it would be. <clears throat> so let's see what happens if I pause it. And I'll give it just a minute. I'm going to give it just a minute to uh, cool off. And we'll see what happens. Alright. Resume. After giving it a minute to cool off. FPS here. It's at 2. And it's gone up to eight again. Down to three. Four. Oh, how exciting. I'm not entirely sure 
um, what's going on with this frame rate. But the frame rate in the other room is better. So this brand new Ryzen 5 um, U series chip in this computer is not beating the Intel HQ chip, which I suppose I should have expected, even though CPU Benchmark says that this is a better chip. You know, this is why you run benchmarks with specific programs and don't just trust a number that boils it all down to a single number for comparison. So, the Zen, uh, the Ryzen, the third gen architecture is supposed to have more stuff to help with encoding video, but as you can see, it's not performing nearly as well as my computer in the other room that's four generations of Intel old at this point. So, what can we conclude? If you're going to do heavy compression of video files, this is perhaps not the best choice. Um, you may need to shell out some more money for a not U chip. <laughs> if you get an Intel Core i7, always get one with a Q in the name, or you're not getting a quad core, you're getting a dual core. Just keep that in mind. Um, any chip ending in a U is not going to perform that great. And I don't think the cooling system in this computer is adequate to keep up super high speed processing the way it ought to be. 4.3, it's just not, it's not reaching the kinds of speeds I was hoping for. So I'm glad I didn't buy this for myself. The gaming laptop in the other room blows it away even though it uses DDR3 and has a four generation old Intel chip. So there you go. Um, you get what you pay for. That's the end of the review, disassembly, blah, blah, blah. I'm your host, Guy Blanky the Camera. Talk to you later. Have a wonderful day, all of my friends. <laughs> <laughs>